Our video for today is multi-step equations. So there's more than one step to solve. So this kind of puts everything together that we've done so far. So you may have to use the distributive property and through the video, if you see the word or the letters DP, that's the abbreviation I'm gonna use. Uh, you may have like terms to combine. So again, if you see LT in the video, that's where we're talking about combining like terms. Uh, you may have the same variable on both sides of the equation. And that's gonna be the main focus of what this video is today uh, as we go. So the big things are you need to show all your steps going down the paper to make it easier. Um, and you really need to be neat. The neater you can be, the easier you can see the process that you're working through. So there are gonna be three different specific answers to the types that we're gonna to work today. You're gonna to have one answer, you're gonna have no solution, and you're gonna have all real numbers. And all three of these will be in the video today. So here we go. So when you're given an equation, you have two variables on both sides. So when I say number variable, let me go through that with you a little bit. So when I say the number, I'm just looking for the number itself. If I say the variable, I'm saying the variable along with the coefficient that's attached to it. So in this case, we've got to move one or the other. You get a choice here. So you choose, and I'm going to choose in this one because you can't really tell me which way to go. So I'm going to choose that we're going to use the variable and we're going to move it to the left hand side. So we're going to take the negative 3 and again anything we move over an equal sign we do it by the opposite operation. So we're going to move it by a positive 3x to both sides. From that we're going to simplify down. We're going to now, because you move the variable to the left, the number has to come to the right. So now you really basically have a two step equation here. So we're gonna take our positive eight and we're gonna move it over to the right hand side. And again, do it both sides to the operation opposite of it. Leaves us with an equation of two X equals 14. Now we're just down to a one step equation. So we divide by two and we get our answer of seven. And this is the one that has only one answer to it. So you will have a solution for that. Some keys that you wanna work on is decide what number to move first. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to stay positive, you want to try and move the largest negative away. Um, so number first, variable second. If you move the variable first, the number has to go. So you're going in opposite directions as you work through this. Uh, once you move the first one to the other one, goes in the next opposite way. And then you're always looking to make your goal. And that is X or your variable by itself. So again, we're gonna choose, in this case, I'm gonna choose and move the number to the right. So we're gonna bring our number this way. So we're gonna take it by a positive three. And then we have to bring our variable to the left-hand side. And we're gonna make sure that we do it by the opposite operation. Now, what, do you, what you notice here is that you notice that you lose your variable. And that makes it a zero because we have to finish the problem. So when we finish over here, we left with 15. We finish here, we get a zero. Well, the question now is, does zero equal 15? And the answer is no. And if it's no, it's a no solution. So if these two not, do not equal each other, you end up with a what's called a no solution problem. So if we look at the next one, a little bit larger problem, nothing any difficult. So the first thing we see is that we've got to use our distributive property. So we're going to distribute our numbers into the parentheses get our variables, get our terms. We're gonna take care of moving, in this case, we're gonna move the variable to the left, so we're gonna go in that direction. Once again, you notice that we lose the variable here, so we have a negative 16 equaling maybe a negative 16. Well, they do equal, so if they do equal when you lose the variable, it's an all real number solution. So again, any number you put in for the variable would work, in this first or second part of the process. Uh, so that's why it's an all real number. Any number will work for that solution because these two equal each other. So again, if you lose the variable, start looking to see if they equal or not equal. So here we go again, we're gonna choose to move the number to the right hand side, so we're bringing it over here. But one thing that you notice is that you lose your constant now. So we're left with 3x equals 2x. Well, you still have to finish the problem. You can't just say, well, I don't know what it is. You have to finish the problem. So we're gonna move our variable. Because we moved our number to the right, our variable's gotta go to the left. So we're gonna take and move our negative two over. 
that gives us this one here with x equals zero. So that would end up being our answer. So again, you still have to finish the problem even though you have an x on one side, x on the other. You have to get your letters on one side and your numbers on the other in order to finish the problem. Because again, our goal is always x by itself. So again, here's another distributive property one. We're looking at getting rid of and we're gonna to choose to move the variable to the left. So we're gonna go in that direction gives us this, so we're gonna move our number to the right, so we're gonna bring our number back, so we're gonna get rid of this to give us our one-step equation. We're gonna finish by dividing the coefficient to both sides, and that's gonna give us a fraction. Now, we're gonna leave our improper fractions as impropers, because if we're asked to check, it's a lot easier to do that, because if it's a mixed number, you've gotta turn it back into an improper fraction anyway. So we're gonna leave all of those as impropers. Okay? So a little bit longer problem here. Again, we're going to take the distributive property. We're going to distribute the two in here to get our first terms. Our last term just comes down. So again, we're going to distribute the negative 5. Be again careful of your signs. Our, uh, this should have an x up here on this part here as well. So that's where this comes at. So that's an x here. So we have like terms now in our second step that we have to shrink or simplify to get to our process here where now we get to choose. So once you have a letter, mom, uh, letter or variable number equals a letter variable or letter number, then you can start moving and choose which way you're going to go. So you're going to choose number to the right. So we're going to send our number from here. We're going to come over here. So we get a negative, again the opposite. So this leaves us with a two-step equation. Basically, we're going to move our letter over or our variable to the left. So again, we're bringing our number this way, our variable goes to the other side, and again, yes, you can end up with a fraction for an answer. And again, the last step here is going to be division by your coefficient. So a few more that are going to get a little bit more challenging in regards to fractions. Um, we're going to distribute a fraction in, and yes, you're going to have to be able to deal with this, so be careful. So we're going to take this and move it in, well, 1 half times x is this. So this part here, I just showed over here. We're going to do the same thing on the right-hand side. This part here, pretty simple. This part here is right here. So we get our 2x, our 2 thirds x plus 4, 1 half x plus 2. So again, we're going to choose to move the number to the right. So we're going to bring it to this direction. So we subtract. So that means our variable is going to go this way and go to the left. So here again, this part goes down here because now you have to find a common denominator. You also have to be aware of your signs. So you've got to be careful in how you work these problems. And this is where it really takes the time to show it neatly and down the paper. So again, all of this step right here is right here in the solving of our solution for our uh, fraction to our variable, which leaves us with a negative 1 6. So we're going to multiply by the opposite or multiply by the reciprocal. And we're going to take the negative with us, so we get a positive. And then we come over here, well, it's 6 over 1, so it's just a negative 6 times 2, and that gives us our negative 12. So you can see here I've shown you the steps that you can use as you work through the problems. One last one to finish up this video, and it's a long one, but it's no tougher than what we've done, but it's with decimals now. So again, we're going to, in this case, we don't, don't have any parentheses, so we're going to use like terms. We're going to simplify our like terms, so I identified my like terms on this side. They simplify down to a negative 13.54. We're going to decide to take this over here. That way I can get rid of the negative, which is a large one. And I, now I subtract these two numbers, because again, different signs. So I end up with a number of 4.14. Now I'm going to take my 8.2a and I'm going to get it over here, so I'm moving it over, so I'm taking it by the opposite, so in this case a negative, which brings me down to a negative or a positive 0.3a equals my 4.14. My last step is I'm going to divide by my coefficient. Be very careful here because you're dividing with a decimal, so you've got to move that decimal one place over to get your answer of 13.7. So Quite a bit of steps in here. Be careful, show your work down the paper, be very neat, and make sure that you use your notes.